<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I'm Marcus Stewart. I'm joined by Kyle Hilliard. Hey, how's it going? This looks familiar. This looks like a, like a series I love. It, it's a, it's kind of, it's adjacent to a series you love. This is Questmaster, a brand new game that went into early access as of this week. And as you can see here, it's a basically build your own Zelda game. Uh, very much inspired by The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, uh, aesthetically speaking, and just sort of the style of it. But uh, very much in the way that Mario Maker will let you build your own Mario games, this takes that formula and says like, hey, you can make your own Zelda dungeons and not only play them yourself, but you can share them with players around the world as well as play other people's creations. So yeah, it also, it also looks like the way you're playing the game now is like you're making your way through a dungeon and manipulating it as you go. Is that kind of what I'm understanding? Yeah, so I'm playing the first dungeon that I've made, which, as we'll see here in a little oh, bit, is okay. a piece of crap. Uh, it is a very basic dungeon, and this is just very much me throwing things down and just trying to get a feel for the uh, different options and mechanics. So, uh, yes, when you're editing a, du or editing a dungeon, you can freely jump from playing it to editing it in real time, which is very nice. Um, I'm playing on PC, as I mentioned before, it's in Steam Early Access, and I'm erasing some enemies, and you can see you can drop down all kinds of different elements like doors and enemies and uh, even like switches and puzzly style items gonna put some spikes there because you know why not make it look nice see doesn't that look threatening it also draws your eyes to the explosive wall which is kind of which is kind of smart too you know that's exactly what i had in mind <laughs> <laughs> when i did that i'm glad you noticed that kyle uh but yeah i'm i've been playing a, a good bit of it and it's it's pretty cool like i'm a, we're both big zelda fans kyle which is yes. why i wanted you on this ngt uh, I, I think as a game, it plays pretty nicely, and I think that just the editing uh, tools are, they feel pretty intuitive so far, like just how snappy it is to jump from editing to playing and then just using the cursor to sort of like, like it's very easy to sort of like sculpt your own rooms and, and put things together pretty quickly, uh, which I nice, like nothing seems overly complicated, and especially if you have sort of the context of being a Zelda fan, it makes things a lot easier, like, oh, I know where I would want to put a big key, or I know what this does. Because uh, a lot of the tools that you have to work with are things that have appeared in like a Zelda game from what I've seen. I haven't seen anything like new mechanics that you can introduce. It's sort of like variations of like puzzle game or puzzle mechanics that have appeared in Zelda games at some point. Right. Yeah. I, but they probably they're I'm, they undoubtedly will add original unique stuff if they haven't already. I'm sure. Because right? this is early access. Yeah. Yeah, and I even in this early access build, I don't have everything because I've played other people's stages, as, and we'll see one of them in this uh, playthrough. But I've seen uh, user-created dungeons that had more things than I had available to play with. And I, I'm not sure how you get them, but if I had to guess, I would probably think you get them in like the sort of single-player part of the game because there is like an overworld and like shops and there seems to be like a like a story driven component of the game right. um how much actual like storytelling there is i'm not sure but like it seems like you can just go around and go on a quest to at the very least maybe get some new options for the editors so that you can make better dungeons as you see yeah i mean I, li I like the idea of there being sort of a you know like a campaign so to speak i mean that was kind of one of the secrets the secret sauce of Mario Maker to me is like they it was essentially a new 2D Mario game and it taught you sort of subtly best practices for making a Mario level you know yeah and those best practices have popped up in my head of like I I've never really aspired to make my own Zelda games in a way that I think I subconsciously did with Mario games growing up Right. And even just playing a few minutes of this game, it has increased my already large respect for Nintendo's uh, and like the Zelda team's skill in designing Zelda dungeons like exponentially just because when you have so much to play with, even with this relatively limited palette, just trying to figure out like, well, what's like a good logical way to lay this out that's also like clever or like devious and like will surprise the player or like what's a way i can lay this out that they'll just have fun with 
You yeah, know? what's interesting, you know? Yeah. And even just seeing the sort of, like, behind the scenes, because there's, like, light coding that you can do, where it's, like, it's not just placing things down, but you can do, like, you can manipulate the behavior of it, of, like, oh, you can program chests to only appear when you kill all the enemies in a room, or when you light all the torches, or solve some sort of puzzle that you laid out. Like, you can mess around oh. with, like, little things. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I laid out, like, four of those things, and I kept falling into the same hole. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how it goes, man. That's Zelda. That's Zelda right there. Yeah, so you see, I'm trying to figure out. So I have, like, and, and one thing I will say that the game, since it's in early access, it, it's still a little rough around the edges at some points. There were mechanics that would work and then sort of break, and then I would have to either, like, restart a dungeon or just get out of it, just, like, exit and come back. I was kind of running into that here because I was like, oh, you see I have a chest and a heart, and those usually appeared when I beat the boss, and I was trying to make sure, like, how come it's not appearing now? Did I break something, or is the uh. game just being fussy right now? Um, I, and it, how how is that programming side of things? Is it is it like is it? I mean, programming is tricky, right? Is it is it a visual language or? It's it's literally just selecting an option. So we'll see it here okay, in a little cool. bit. So you just when you select an item that can be programmed, you just hold it down. So you see the oh. properties. That's it. Look, those are all just different conditions. So like that one's the boss condition or the enemy condition of like gotcha. if you toggle okay. that on, it will only appear when all the enemies in the room have been defeated. Right. Yeah, I I review I believe I reviewed both Mario Makers for Game Informer. And but I think I like just on my own time the the maker game that I got the most invested in was probably Little Big Planet the first one. And I remember I I found that sort of the quote unquote programming to be the the most difficult part of that game, you know. This happens when this happens. If if this then that that kind of stuff's tricky. Yeah, Little Big Planet's level editor. As much as I like playing the game and I love downloading levels, I never really got too big into the level editor because it was just a little too dense for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think this, from what I've seen so far, it's kind of like in that it's closer to Mario Maker where, like, it's just approachable enough where you can get in and do some, like, pretty cool things without like breaking your brain so much but the depth is still there for those that really want to dig into it and get like pretty wacky with the things they want to do yeah so you can see now i went to the the little bulletin board in the overworld and that's where you download uh, other people's levels so i've loaded up a user level that was rated pretty highly um what's nice is that the um there's different tabs that divide the user levels by like oh this is the most played or this is what's trending right now so you can kind of get a sense of like what's popular at the moment or what's doing well that's cool but, that they have that implemented in early access already, because that's like that's make or break for a game like this, you know? Yeah, and you, you can see now just like the immediate contrast versus this level, which clearly whoever made this put a lot of <laughs> more thought into than the, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, the, hot, the hot garbage that I was in a few minutes ago. <laughs> but yeah, it looked good to me. I don't know. Yeah, well, Kyle, you didn't play it. You would. <laughs> you have <laughs> to see. But here, look, oh, look, one you, of these. You can, uh -oh. Yeah, you can set one of these up. Look how smart I am here. My god, it's like watching a genius in real time. I Truly. definitely didn't uh, spend multiple attempts doing this and then edit those uh, failed attempts out. <laughs> I believe you when you tell me that, Marcus. Yeah, it's a very specific thing I had to mention. Um, but it, I was like, oh, it's cool that you can you can even make one of those kind of like puzzles on your own. Yeah, that is cool. The, um, the sword action seems good, too. Like, Link never can swing his sword that fast, you know? That's cool. Yeah, like I, I, I feel like I remember Link's Fast, like he has like a decent sword swing. Like it's it's quick for the time, or maybe my memory is just fuzzy when I think about like SNES days. But like I like the boomerang in this game a lot more. Like it can go further. It swings in like a pretty wide arch. And you see in there. See, I, I'm props to whoever made this because like just giving you that uh, boomerang there and then immediately teaching you how to use it by locking you in a room until you light all the torches is very much like it's a very fundamental thing. But again, it's not something maybe the average person would think to do. Yeah, no, it's it's my favorite tutorial is that we don't tell you how it works, but we put you in a position where you have to figure out how it works in order to be successful, you know? Like that's yeah. that is something Zelda has always been very good at, and it's it the, playing other people's levels has given me ideas for what I could do, and it's like it's that inspiring thing where you're just like, oh, I didn't even know that you could do this, but now that I'm seeing it, I want to immediately jump into the editor and see if I can replicate that or yeah, yeah, upon it. Uh, so yeah, 
it's like I said, it's only in, been in early access for <laughs> like a day now, but there's already like a decent amount of uh, user created stuff out there that I'm ex uh, excited to dig into it just to get a sense of like what people are doing and seeing who's playing off of who and just like where the community's at with what's given. And then it makes me excited for seeing how this game evolves over time with just the things that they'll add to it. Um, but yeah, Kyle, are you, uh, have you ever wanted anything like this for Zelda? I mean, it was certainly when Mario Maker came on the scene, the big reaction, I feel like, to a lot of people were like, this is great, they should do it for Zelda. And, like, if I'm being honest with myself, it, like, the idea of making a Mario level made a lot more sense to me than making a Zelda level, in terms of, like, something I'd want to do. Um, so, like, I don't, I'm, I watch this and I'm like, this seems really well done, I like the way it looks, I want to see what other people are doing. I don't know if I'm really have the desire to make a Zelda dungeon. I'm not sure, but I'm. You think I'm, you'd be more playing other people's levels than making your own? Yeah, I think so. I but I I I could be wrong. I, I mean, I'm I'm certainly interested. You know, like it's a cool idea, and it's like I said, it seems very well executed. Yeah, I'd say like I said, the tools are pretty easy to use. So like, as someone that is kind of like iffy on level editors in a lot of games, I was in there pretty quick, at least making pretty rudimentary things and having like a decent understanding of what I was doing, which is, you know, to the game's credit. And yeah, we're looking at here, seems... this is you. What were you saying? Oh, I was just going to say, it seems like a mouse is kind of crucial. Like, I think that's the secret of why the first Mario Maker was generally more exciting and successful than the sequel was because we had the stylus on the Wii U. Right. And like this, you said you're, you're going back and forth between mouse and keyboard and controller, right? And that works pretty well. Yeah, like I'm playing a controller when I'm just doing Zelda stuff like this, but then when I'm in the editor, I'm just using the mouse just because right. it makes it easier. Yeah, um, no, that makes sense. So yeah, this is the overworld, and you can see here, this is there's other shops you can go to, there's characters you can talk to, like even there, there's some stuff where like, hey, you can't go in here yet because you got to do some stuff. Uh, I have, this is the part of the game I've dug into the least, like just the sort of like single player, or ge like general adventure part of the game. So I'm not sure how much of that is it, like available in early access, if any. Um, but just seeing like the hints of it being there is like really cool. And again, I want to see how that ties into the sort of like build your own dungeon aspect of the game. Yeah, yeah, hanging out up here will do nothing but give you ideas for how you can make your own stuff better. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's Quest Master, everyone. It's available now on Steam, early access. Uh, I'm having fun playing it, and I want to dig into some more. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for having me.